in 10 years or less based on these principles, these cannot fail principles, I should achieve financial freedom within 10 years or less. And my hope is that you can also produce the same results, right? But a seven to 10 year time frame using these same principles, right? Then what I'm going to do after I share the principles with you is I'm going to go into the the business model of how I operate and then certain money moves that I am making over the next 10 years. And if these things align with you, then you can pull from it. If something doesn't align with you, then you don't have to pull from it. You can customize it to how you want. So that is the purpose of this masterclass today. So now let's go to share the screen. Just want to make sure audio is solid. So go ahead and just drop a comment if you're like, yep, audio's good. We're clear. And if you can see my screen very clearly, I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so we can go like that. I think that'll help. Maybe I'll go in a little more. How's that? Let me get a comment or two. Audio is good. And the visual is very clear no issue. I want to make sure I get it. I see a comment before I start. Audio is good, Judy. Thank you very much. And the visual. Give me the visual. I know it's about a 15 second delay, so I'll wait. Hey, Philip, how are you, man? I'm excited to work with you, man. We were, we had a good call yesterday. Real good call. Okay. Okay. And it's good. Beautiful. 10-year wealth plan involves having a clear mindset with clear principles to generate abundant results. That is my focus over the next 10 years clear mindset with clear principles. I cannot operate in a world of uncertainty, uh, uh, mixed feelings. I can't operate based off my emotional feelings, how I feel about a thing. I cannot operate in this world where today this means one thing and then tomorrow because of your feelings, it means something else. No, I can't operate like that. I need a clear mindset with clear principles to generate abundant results. So my first principle is essentially a be, do, have mindset. I have to be the thing that I want to become. I have to do the do's that require that are required, are prerequisites to be the thing that I want to be. And if I be the be and do the do's and don't the don'ts, I will have, I will have the thing I desired on this planet. Point blank, simple, simple. You like that? Now the formula to be, do, have is to be fruitful. That's the first step. Be fruitful, which means to be productive. And in order to be productive or in order to produce anything, you have to work. And in order to work, right, the, the proper, the best definition I've ever found on the word work is to become who you are, become who you are. So if I'm consistently being Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez, I, I can't help but think I'm going to get better at being Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez. If I keep being him, if I try to be Grant Cardone, if I try to be Tony Robbins, if I try to be Patrick Bet David, if I try to be Denzel Washington, if I try to be anybody other than Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez, I might have a really difficult time doing that. And what's funny is we're told this by our parents when we go to school, don't don't be like the other kids, honey, right? I remember my mom saying that, don't try to be like them. Don't try to be like the hoodlums. Don't try to be like the ghettos. Don't try to be like the wannabe rich kids. Be you, be you. Now, what's interesting is I can't tell you how many calls I've had with clients. All right, let me bring it back to me real quick. This, I'm not calling you out, I'm not. This is just, this is truth. This is transparency for the 47 people in the house and for the clients in the house here. If it, if it hits you, then it hits you. If it doesn't, it doesn't apply. Okay. I've had so many calls with clients, with people before they became clients, where you're trying to be someone else rather than yourself. The way that you're not saying, no one's saying that you're trying to be like someone else. You're not even thinking that you're trying to be like someone else. But what's happening is in the world that we live in today, social media, right here, we watch things, we see things, we get, say, sold or influenced, persuaded or convinced into things that you didn't run through your lens, through your, your business lens, your purpose lens, your kingdom lens. You didn't run it through it yet. You got convinced, sold, persuaded, influenced, whatever it is. And now you're trying to do that thing 
that may be outside of your element, outside of your skills, gifts, and talents. And what's happening is we're somewhat chasing money. We're, we're chasing a thing. We're chasing money. Like subconsciously, it, it happens very weird, right? And I can, I can spot it. I've been through it. I've experienced it. And it's really healthy to become aware of that, have that awareness. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I chasing money? Am I chasing a thing? Or am I chasing my purpose? Am I chasing Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez, the best version of him? So if it hit you, hey, reflect. If it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply. Cool. All right. No harm, no foul. So I just want to get clear on that. So that's how you become who you are is when we look, we have to put on the right lens first, right? So that's extremely important. Let me take it back to the screen now. Clear mindset, clear principles to generate abundant results. Be, do, have mindset. Got to be fruitful, which is to be productive. In order to be productive, you got to work. In order to work, you got to become who you are, right? From there, we got to multiply. Once you have done the thing that you've been practicing at, that you've been working in that career at for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, if you keep doing the thing, right, and not converting to multiplication, right, which multiplication, in other words, is duplicating, how do you duplicate the work that you do? Because you're only getting paid by the hour of that or by the performance of the work that you're doing. So that can only go so far. How do you duplicate yourself? Some forms of duplication is creating content. I currently have 906 plus Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez working for me on YouTube alone, 24 seven, day and night, 365 days a year, every hour of every, of every minute, of every second of every day, all those Denzels are working for me. That is true multiplication. Duplicating, in other words, the, the best form, in my opinion, of duplication is business. The best form, I would argue, is business and possibly ministry as well, because you can get people to latch on to a vision, a dream, and people want to join you and do that work for you or with you. So now you're getting paid on other people's time, other people's work in collaboration. So that's the next step. That's a do. First, I have to be. I can't do anything before being the thing. Like I can't, I can't do mechanic if I haven't learned how to become a mechanic. I have to first become a mechanic before I can do mechanic work, right? It's just like, even if I tried to do mechanic work, I'm going to have limited knowledge. I'm going to have limited experience, right? I need to learn it, have someone demonstrate it to me, show it to me, then I go and do it. So I am mirroring whoever was my teacher, right? If I have zero experience on cars and I try to touch that car to fix it, there is a 99% chance I will do something incorrect. But if I have someone with me who has done mechanic work in the past, that means they have that, that being in them to do that thing. And now they're showing me so that I can be a proper tool resource for that vehicle for that car it, it, it works like it's a principle right it's like you can't violate it it's just, i mean it, it violates you you can't violate the principle the principle violates you right so be first then do multiply is a do replenish is a do which means to reinvest reinvest the profits back into the thing right subdue control rule over govern right control rule over govern this is where you step into the stages of expert credible authority right you have authority over this thing you're credible you have trust people yield to your authority they listen to you and once you get to that stage you are now dominating okay i am dominating in the area of velocity banking that is my area that is my gift and because of that i've i govern over it i rule over it i control the environment i am now training others to do what i do i'm dominating to principle second principle okay this really goes in line with the first one. Second principle is understanding the highest form of wealth is imagination and here are the levels of wealth the levels of wealth is implementation many of you in this room are just implementing. You're simply working for someone or for something or for some corporation per hour, salary, commission, whatever it is, right? You're just implementing, but you haven't gone to multiplication yet. That is how you're going to exponentially increase 
your production is when you graduate to multiplication. So you have to, impl everyone has to implement first. Everyone. You got to be, and then you do implementation. You do the work. And now management is a level of multiplication. It's a, it's a level of multiplication. You're managing others to do what you do. So you don't have to do that thing. So you can work on another thing to get better at, which leads to the third level, which is the next highest level of wealth, which is teaching, communication, speaking, consultant, coach. When you're doing these things, you're now in a position where you're not quote unquote physically doing that task. You're teaching, communicating, speaking, coaching, consulting about it in the form of courses, programs, one-to-one -one group settings, seminars, masterminds, masterclasses, workshops, sermons, right? social media content creation and now you're getting paid in many different ways many different ways and then the highest level of imagination of wealth is imagination how do i know that well if we look at the most famous most sold book in the world which has the most amount of copies written it's been rewritten it's been rewritten it's been translated in every language on the planet probably which is this book right here, the Bible itself, basic instructions before leaving earth. And for those of you who are not avid readers like myself, I have some very, very good news for you. You don't even have to get past the first page of this book to prove my theory on the highest form of wealth creation is imagination. You don't even have to get past the first page of the book this book called the Bible, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, the first book of Moses called Genesis, right? Chapter one, it says, in the beginning, God created. Done. You don't have to go no further. In the beginning, God created. So whether you believe in a God or not, whether you believe in God or not, isn't it interesting that this God, in the beginning, God created. Isn't it interesting? This God is starting out letting us know that in the beginning, he created something. He thought something. He imagined something. And he called it heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I don't know about you, but if I was God, if I was the God of the universe, and I was supreme, infinite, immortal, like all these different things. I personally think I would start out letting you know who I am, right? In in terms of what I can do. I am infinite. I am immortal. I operate outside of space, time, and matter. My name is God. I'm supreme leader. No one rules over me than, than me. I am everything that ever will be. I am the, the beginning, the middle, the end. I know all things. I can stop time. I can intervene. I can I can do everything. I, I'm the judge, jury, and executioner, right? I, I, I'm all these things. This guy didn't even start like that. He just simply said, in the beginning, God created, which is interesting to me because that just shows me he actually did tell me who he is in terms of how he thinks and operates by revealing the very first thing he, he thought to do which was in the beginning God created. And because you and I are creators, because we have the ability to reproduce, we have the ability to not just reproduce ourselves, but we can create things in our image. We can create so many different things with our, with our hands that animals cannot do, which is why we're not anywhere near an animal. So never compare yourself to animals. That would be an insult to yourself, to your own being. Because an animal cannot do what you do. You have the ability to create way more intelligently and design things creatively, creatively to accomplish a goal or solve a particular problem, many problems. So that's just interesting to me, right? Imagination. If I could just sit in my zone, imagine something, create something, solves problems in the marketplace today, and then I reverse engineer the, the forms of wealth. So I go from creation, right? I create something. I then talk about the thing. I communicate it with others. I speak about it. I teach about it. I coach about it because I've been doing that thing that I've been thinking in my mind, right? I might invent something or I might do a strategy or a concept. Then I'm doing it myself. I'm my own guinea pig. I get results. I'm like, okay, this really works. Let me work with others to see how that will work. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Then I find people I could 
manage, then I find more people to implement certain things within that creative work that I just built. So I reverse engineer. I go from imagination to then teaching, communicating, to then managing and implementing. So work work from the high low rather than down up. But now, not to say that you shouldn't do that. Like I, I think it's important to initially you're gonna start out implementing, right? But I think a lot of us stop at implementation and managing. We never get to that next level of teaching, communicating, speaking, consulting, and coaching. And this could be on anything, on anything. I was having a conversation with with a a mom. She's uh, married. She has a husband who's a fire alarm technician. And he's been doing that. I said, how long he's been doing that? And she she laughed. She said, oh, he's been doing that forever. So I'm like, what is forever? That's like three, like three decades. And he's been doing fire alarm technician work. So he's been doing the thing for 30 years plus. So all he has done is implement the thing. And maybe he's done some management work. Maybe he's might have spoken to some people in the past, but he hasn't gotten to the level of teaching, communicating, speaking, consulting, consulting, and coaching. If he were to just do that and approach every local university in his state, in his city, in his town, his neighborhood, that is teaching and raising up the next generation of fire alarm technicians, he could approach those institutions and let them know, hey, I've been doing that thing for 30 years plus. Would you like me to teach that class? I can increase your pass rates. I can increase this. I can put more people into the marketplace. Do you understand as a fire alarm technician, there's two major streams of income that that man can tap into. One on the university and education side. Universities will pay him thousands of dollars to come and speak to the students, to train, communicate, show them all the the mistakes that you'll make and how to avoid them, how to prep them. And then he could be a, a fire alarm recruiting agency, a fire alarm tech recruiting agency and recruit those, that next generation that's taking the test. They pass the test to get the certification and he can match it with the business owners, the entrepreneurs out there that are running businesses where they need fire alarm technicians. And then the wife revealed something to me that there's a lack of fire alarm technicians in the whole US, let's just say. Like there's a there's a lack. So that means there's a demand and there's not enough supply. Can you imagine, I was telling the mom, can you imagine if your husband was to fulfill that demand by providing the supply? So you get paid on both ends. You're teaching the supply to become the demand. And then you're bringing that demand to the people who are demanding the service and you get paid abundantly. And then if you keep doing that, then you're not too far away from thinking even bigger into imagination. Well, what if I became the owner of a company that needs fire alarm technicians? Or what if I became the teacher? What if I created the curriculum for fire alarm technicians to become fire alarm technicians? What if I built that criteria, that curriculum through videos, plus written word, plus a book, presented it to the universities, and now the universities throw out what they had because it sucked, right? Or wasn't good or wasn't efficient or was outdated. And now they put in your stuff and now your stuff gets used for the next 40, 50, 60, 70. It outlives you. Is that not better than any crypto invest, like like any stock, any dividend any, you know, drop shipping business, not to knock any network MLM direct sales, like not to knock any of those things. But I'm like talking to the mom, I'm like, hey mom, like you guys are sitting on a gold mine if we were to just apply these principles right here, a gold mine. And that's what I hope that you're getting out of this so far. Before I go back to it, let me um, see who's in the house. We got 51 people in here. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's see, I'm getting more than I bargained for from this, awesome. I've been trying to get it, but my numbers aren't right just yet. And I know how you feel about that. Don't worry. Don't worry. Focusing on actual gifts and talents versus doing something just to make money will reveal itself eventually, maybe not in a good way. I agree. Yes, yes, yes. Just because do something for 30 years doesn't mean you're a teacher. And that is, that couldn't be more true. Like that is so true, which is why, you know, if, if I decided to become a fire alarm technician, how long would it would it take the average person to do it let's say it's a let's say it's a six month to one year journey you got to pay for the certifications all this stuff let's just say it's a six month to one year journey so now i got the certification i passed i am now 
a fire alarm technician and I get hired and now I'm going to learn from that man I was just telling you about, the, the mom, the wife, her husband. I'm going to learn from her husband on how to properly do my job. The average training in most companies is anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months training in the beginning to, to learn that task. A couple of weeks, a couple of months. So what happens is the moment I have finished training in those couple of weeks, couple of months, and I'm doing the thing and I'm doing it, like I'm doing it, understand that I have the same level of experience technically than the person that's been doing it for 30 years. The only difference is maybe they just do it faster. So the reason why that man is not going to continue to make more and more money, eventually he's going to hit a cap in terms of how much you can make in implementation. You can only make so much money in implementation and even management. You're going to be capped out. You're only going to get a percentage increase every year if that, if the company continues to to do well, but you're subject to that. So if someone says, oh, I have 30 years of experience, so it's like, not really. You really only have maybe a couple of months, couple of years of training and doing the thing, but you just kept doing it over and 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 over again. But now if you decided to now teach others, you're developing a new experience skill, which is to the point why just because you've been doing something for a long period of time doesn't automatically make you a teacher, but it certainly is motivating to like consider doing that. Like, why not? Why not? Becoming a teacher, that skill can be helpful. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that was my point, right? You made my point right right as I was saying. Bring the heart and knowledge into oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm capped right now. Yep. <clears throat> I'm telling you that next level is teaching, communication, speaking, consulting, and coaching. Using this right here, these muscles, the vocal cords. Imagine becoming so good at the way you speak. I had a business partner of mine. We were on the phone. Shout out to Sebastian Boyer business credit, the approved guy. We're on the phone together. It was around, I think it was like nine o'clock at night. And I know that usually at the top of the morning throughout the day, my voice is a certain way. Once we get into the later hours of the evening, nine, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, my voice gets a little deeper, a little softer, starts to sound like this. And I'm, it's like I'm talking in your ear, not to be seductive. It's just, I don't know. It's just how my voice kind of works. Tapped into that voice a little bit. And I'm on the phone with Sebastian. We're talking business, just talking like this, casual. I'm not as, the energy is not as high, right? My energy is not as high as we are in the top of the morning, right? How I can be very motivating and I'm, and I'm, I'm in it, right? The energy is pumping. But at late at night, when I start talking like this, his, uh, Sebastian's, his, his wife, I could hear me, I think on the phone. And she was like, he should do money, motivational, um, audio clips where like he just does like money affirmations or something or you know like say just say words talk about money and she was like I could fall asleep to that you know or I I could that would motivate me and I'm like that's interesting my fiance says the same thing the moment I start talking money to her especially at like 10 o'clock at night nine o'clock at night after we've had dinner we're laying we're laying down watching movies and all of a sudden they just decided to bring up a topic about money anytime you interact with me in person and you bring up money like my ears perk up i'm i'm like i'm ready to say something right i'm like yeah 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 what 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 do you got so even my fiance is like the moment i start talking money especially when i get it down to a voice like this and a tempo like this she's like ooh. Oof, keep talking I'm ready to go to sleep right love it oh my god the power of our voice our vocal cords. Imagine, right? Imagine that. Capturing the value of your vocal cords. Allowing, if you're a follower, if you're a believer, allowing Holy Spirit to speak through your vocal cords. Allowing a higher authority being to operate through your vocal cords to say a word that sparks hope, passion, motivation, conviction in other people's lives. My goodness, what could that, what could that do? I don't know. So let's do a recap. I'm going to share the screen again. And I know someone was saying that you couldn't see the second principle too well. So do I need to go like that? Probably go in that distance. So recap, recap. Clear mindset with clear principles to generate abundant results. First principle, be, do, have mindset. You got to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and you'll dominate the marketplace. Second principle high is understanding, just knowing 
that the highest form of wealth creation is imagination. And then knowing what the levels are to get there. You got to implement, you got to manage, teach, right? Communicate, speak, consult, coach, like some kind of form, create content, right? Imagine. I feel like imagination and content creation like go hand in hand. The third principle is setting targets. The formula that I have for setting my money target, setting my money target is I look at current annual gross income and I times that by 10, okay? Times it by 10. That's the target goal. And giving you the example, in 2022, my revenue was 372K. That was gross. That was actually, no, that was, that was net revenue. And then I guess technically gross. I always mess that up with net and gross. Like I know that's how much money I made on the, on the tax thing. That was a number that I saw. 372 was a high number. And then you minus taxes and all that stuff. And then there's what's left over. I guess that's net revenue after taxes, right? I think that's what that is. So gross, 372 times it by 10. The goal is 3.7 million, $3,720,000. That is the target goal that I am setting for 2024. Now, here's the thing. I, I may not get nowhere near 3.7 million, but that's okay. The, the idea of setting such an expansive goal is the theory that has been proven. So it's no longer a theory. This is confirmed. 10x is easier than 2x. This might be hard for people to comprehend. This might be way outside of their, their comfort level or comfort zone, where that may be, right? Those are just opinions. I'm operating off of principle, fact. I just got done saying that this first principle here, be fruitful and multiply, it doesn't say be fruitful and grow by 10% rate of return. It doesn't say that. It says multiply. That's two times two. It's not one plus one, right? It's two times two. It's, it's four times four. It's eight times eight, right? It's, it's multiplication over and over and over and over again. So we set that expansive goal because now it's forcing you to think about the dues, the activities that can get me to $3.7 million in revenue in one year. If I'm constantly thinking about the activities that is required to get to 3.7 million, million, guess what? Me generating 372,000, whatever I've done to acquire that revenue, I have to do things differently to get to 3.7 million. I have to think bigger. I have to think beyond myself, beyond my own family, beyond my own self. I have to start thinking about community, neighborhood, city, state, nation, country. That's how I have to start thinking, okay? So that's the third principle about setting targets with your money goals. The fourth principle is practicing my main thing until I can't get it wrong. I think a lot of people will will do a work until they get it right, and then they'll just stop there. But I practice velocity banking until I can't get it wrong. When I do that, and I practice until I can't get it wrong, then I begin to delegate and automate as much as I can while practicing the main thing until I can't get it wrong. So that is a strong principle. Let me know in the comments if you get a lot of value from that principle right there because that has really helped me in the last one to two years is really just continuing to practice on the thing that I'm really good at until I, it's like I can't get it wrong. I can't. Like, you got to get that good. I want to be that good so I can't get it wrong. Principle number five is just being able to answer the four major questions in life. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? If you can, the, the, the clearer you can answer those questions, the easier, the simpler it's going to be, and I know my grammar is terrible right now, to accomplish those beginning principles in your life as it relates to your money, income, generation process. Five principles I shared, got 61-ish people in the house. If you're getting a ton of value from this, let me know. Put it in the comments. What's what's your favorite principle so far? What's one of the five principles that you're taking away from this? By the way, if you want this Word doc, if you want it, reach out to me via email, denzel at builder to contributor.com. Happy to give that to you. Send it to you. Just let me know. Happy to give you that Word doc. It's my 10-year wealth plan that involves these five principles. And then I'm going to break down you know, even more things on this that I've uh, built out here. So be before I go further, I just shared five principles. The fifth one 
was four major questions in your life. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I going? If there's any questions you should be asking yourself on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, sitting down with your husband, sitting down with your wife, sitting down with your kids at the dinner table, we should be going around the table and asking these questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I going? Who am I? That's an easy one. Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez. That's who I am. Now, what's interesting is when you introduce yourself to someone else, right? You come with an impression. You come with a reputation. So my goal in life is to improve my reputation as much as humanly possible because my reputation is also abiding in the reputation of my father who was in heaven. So his reputation is on the line just as much as my reputation is on the line, which gives me the confidence and authority to move forward on this planet to know that I have the backing. So who am I? Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez. There you go. That's who I am. No, I'm not a, I am not the velocity banking guy, although that's what I do. Like I am Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez. Why am I here? Those are the do's that I do. Why am I here? I am here to serve you on your personal finances, helping you make better financial decisions in your life. That is why I'm here in this very moment. What's my purpose? My purpose is a servant of God unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Point blank, point blank, right? That's my purpose. I'm a servant of God unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am here to serve you on your personal finances, helping you make better financial decisions in your life. And my name is Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez. Here is my reputation. Here is my father's reputation. Here's what he has done in my life. And maybe you can have some of that as well. Should you abide in these principles that cannot fail when implemented, boom. Where am I going is what I'm going to share, right? This is where I'm going. I'm letting you know my 10-year wealth plan is where I'm going, right? So that's what I'll share with you. Do that for yourself. Let me know in the comments. You like that? Is that good? So now coming back to, the, to share the screen here, I'm going to share with you the business model. Here is the business model of how I operate. Step one, create content. So I'm already starting with imagination, right? I'm creating content. I imagined it in my brain. I created a live stream on YouTube and now it is being played out right this moment. So I create content that delivers value to my ideal audience. The income result of that, what happens is I monetize. So I'm getting, I'm receiving a stream of income from YouTube for simply providing them the content that they want. YouTube wants more content that people will watch. I had a conversation with a gentleman, shout out to uh, uh, Daniel, who's a business owner. We were having a really nice conversation together and he was telling me, he was like, Denzel, um, I've been watching YouTube for a while and I can, I'm telling you, I've never watched a video for 58 minutes straight. I've never done that before. So shout out to Daniel, um, who's a business owner and I'm excited to introduce him to our community and finance geek ministry. So if you're not a part of finance geek ministry, that's something you definitely want to be a part of. We, we gather uh, roughly two times a month and we, we share ideas, we collaborate. I pass the mic, right? I give you the mic to, to speak, share, work on the things that you're working on. So that's what he told me. We're having a conversation. He was like, he's like, I, I, I can't like sit, but when I got to your videos, like I watched an entire video, it was 58 minutes long. And I like sat through the whole entire thing and was like plugged in to exactly all the things that you were saying. I'm like, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome, right? So that's me delivering value to my ideal audience which produces that income result, right? So back to the screen here. Income result, monetization, referral, affiliate partners, as you will see in the links below in every video, that produces business partners, that produces courses, programs, products, and services. That's roughly seven streams of income. Seven streams is a principle. That's a principle. Developing at least seven streams of income is a principle. It doesn't mean you go out and start seven streams all at once. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend starting with the main thing, the one thing, master that so you can't get it wrong. And then you develop a second thing that feeds into the first thing and you keep doing it and they run parallel, right? Step two, right, is 
after I create the content, I make offers, right? I offer people opportunities to work with Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez as a strategist, consulting, coaching, right? The income result of that is one-on-one -on -one calls, group calls. That's roughly two streams right there. And those streams kind of feed into the seven streams that I already mentioned. So you could say, okay, maybe nine streams, but eh, it's roughly seven anyways. Step three is the ministry work, okay? This is a preference. You don't have to do this. This is just how I operate. I'm just showing you my business model, right? Like I said, you take what works that you want to implement in your life and then you throw out the rest, right? If it doesn't make sense or you keep it, put it in the back burner, you'll apply it later. So for me, step three is ministry of finance. I do this. The result is additional giving, <clears throat> which leads to building up leaders that grow into building more business. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Voice is, uh, you know, again, you, you work the vocal cords a lot. They start to choke up on you sometimes. So I got to practice that. Pray for me. Pray for me. So step three, ministry of finance. That allows me to give beyond measure. Giving is a principle. I give with no expectation of a return and I get a massive return. And I just continue to operate in that. I, I give to just give. I'm not trying to get back something. I'm just giving just to give, what happens, it's a protocol, is you, I am now sparking something in your heart to want to give back what you receive. You want to give more. And then when I receive that more from you, that is now an indication that sparked in my heart to want to give more on top of what you gave. And it becomes this healthy battle, this lovely battle of giving and outgiving, giving and outgiving more and more and more. So that literally builds up leaders and it's just, it's amazing. Step four is I syndicate, real GDP in the economy, building business, helping people build business to serve a greater audience of people. So when I say syndicate, I'm combining resources. My goal over the next 10 years is to combine the resources that I've been able to generate so far, the platform, all the help that I have, all the resources that I have, and then work with my clients to develop real businesses, real stuff, stuff that we, we make, stuff that, you know, a service business, like real GDP in the economy, build business, help people build business to serve a greater audience of people. And then step five is find people with big visions and dreams collaborate with those big thinkers to achieve greater results this one hits home for me this is a big one for me go ahead and comment which one out of the five works best for you you can just put step one step two step three step four step five or you can just say all of them right go ahead and comment that which one sparks the most you know energy value for you like oh my god this is what i'm gonna really like commit to for me, it was step five. So I'm going to leave that on the screen real quick. Give you a, a second or two to respond in the comments. Go ahead and let me know which step is really speaking to you that you want to go ahead and implement, right? For me, it was step five. And it looks like Judy and I are on the same page. I like that. I want to see more comments. So I left it on the screen long enough. I'm going to now take it back to myself and talk about the, the idea of finding people with big visions, big dreams, and collaborate with those big thinkers to achieve great results. I myself, I am, yes, a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, but what I've learned about myself, and this is gonna be like very opposite to what many of the content creators are, are pushing you all to consider doing, which is to leave your nine to five, become a boss babe, become a boss dad, right? Make boss moves, right? Be become a CEO, become an entrepreneur, you know, own your own lifestyle, all this stuff. I, I get it. I, I know that that's, that's great. It's sexy. It's amazing. But what I've realized about myself, and I've heard only a few content creators bring this up, is they talk about the type of entrepreneur you are. There's different types. So not every entrepreneur is a number one guy, the person with the vision. Although everyone in here should have a vision, you should have a dream for, for the life that you want, or you should. What I'm getting at is in, when we go into the business marketplace, your dream, your vision may not have as much value in the marketplace as you think, okay, number one. Two, 
you may not know how to convey that message to the marketplace to convince an audience. So what I've learned about myself over the last five years is I'm not actually a a number one. And I've known this from like day one, but I've I've just continued to confirm it year over year over year. Where I'm like, yeah, that's just not That's just not me. And I want to let you know that that's okay. Like it's okay to not quote unquote become a boss babe, right? A boss mom, boss dad, you know, all these things. Like that's okay. And yes, this is very controversy, right? This is flips like, wait, what? Shouldn't we be, you know, not, you know, going from the E and the S quadrant to the B and the I? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm getting at is you don't have to be the one that puts up the capital the responsibility, all the investment in that quote unquote business opportunity. You don't have to be that guy or that girl. There are plenty of quote unquote number two entrepreneur, number three, number four, number five, number six type people that will make more money than majority of your wannabe solo entrepreneurs here on YouTube, including myself. Like I'm putting myself in that batch, putting myself in the hot seat here. Like be careful This goes back to trying to be someone, right? Be careful if you try to copy me. Be careful in terms of doing what I do because I'm letting you know right now, like after five years of being a business owner, I know I'm actually a much better employee than I am an entrepreneur. That's the truth. That's that's like real awareness. And this is okay to to know this about yourself. I am a much better number two in a company, a right-hand man. I am a supporter. I'm a helper. I'm a giver. I don't have to be in the spotlight. I don't need the recognition. I've always said this in my videos. I just want to be in the room where the information is going down, where the stuff is going out. I just want to have the wisdom, the knowledge to proceed in my life and be the best servant unto God, unto the Lord Jesus Christ I can possibly be on this planet. That's where I'm at. So what I've realized over the years, as I'm building my own personal business, which is important, right? It's important to have that, but I'm teaming up with people like Steve Parisi, IBC Global, teaming up with people like Caleb, Better Wealth, right? I'm teaming up my buddy, Alex Albaran. He's already doing seven figures in his business. I'm I'm teaming up with people that are operating at a higher level than me with a bigger, clear, Vision and mindset. Prime example. Caleb, I'll I'll uh, share my screen real quick. I'll pull him up just so you guys can can see him, so you know who I'm talking about. So this is Caleb, right? He has a YouTube channel called Better Wealth. He has two channels. One called Better Wealth. The other one's called uh, And Asset or The And Asset. Doesn't have a whole lot of subscribers, right? You know, I have more, right? He's got 19.8k. But the dude, same age as me, 27 years old. This guy is rocking it. He has an actual company with employees. He has a team of people. I I had the opportunity to meet his entire team and they're like all in on Caleb. When I met these, I'm like, what? And I realized I'm all in on Caleb as well. So I went to his event called the And Asset Mastermind. There was people in the room doing anywhere from low six figures to seven, eight, nine, even 10 plus figures, like real players in the particular space that Caleb and I are in, in the, in the insurance space. So I'm just blown away by this guy. And then he casted out a vision. He casted out a vision at his event. He said, we, I want to help a million people get insured. Okay. He wants to help a million people get insured. I know he's probably already helped thousands pretty sure. So with Caleb's vision of a million people that he wants to serve, he wants to serve a million people, right? Which is phenomenal. I myself wasn't even, I don't have the comprehension skills or capability to even think that big of helping 1 million people. I just got done telling you that over the last five years, I've only served about 1300 people one to one 1300 peep guys that's that's less than one percent of his goal to help a million people and i'm not sure what his timeline is i just know that that's something that i could dedicate the next 40 years in his vision so now 
here's where I know where my gifts lie. This is why you need to understand, you have to answer those questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? When you get clear on this, you're not confused. Get very, very, very clear. I look at a, at a, at a Caleb, I look at his material, I go to his event, he cast out the vision. The vision's so big that my vision, my dream can go inside of his vision and his dream, right? It immediately solves mine just because of how big his is. And then I can dedicate my entire life on his vision and dream, which is gonna solve mine. Say I had said, you know, my target, say financially was 3.7 million to 10X, okay? To help a million people, that's a hundred million dollar business, at least helping a million people, that's a hundred million plus dollar business that he just cast it out, right? And if you run the math on that, you can absolutely get there, probably even more, right? 100 million, not valuation, revenue of serving a million people because he's not just gonna help them insure them with life insurance on a million people. There's so many other products that come with that. Health insurance, disability insurance, long-term care, annuities, retirement accounts, starting a business, taxes. I mean, this guy has it all. So I'm like, boom tapping into that vision. Another example, Steve Parisi, IBC Global, his plan by 2030 is to go to $100 million. My plan was 3 mil, 3.7. So all I need to do is capture 3% of Steve Parisi's revenue, 3% of his revenue in my business. That's all I need to do is capture that. With Caleb, all I need to do is capture 1% to 3% of his vision, right? So I'm like, boom, I like his vision. I like C's vision, $100 million company, better wealth, $100 million valuation for sure. I can easily see it just based on the environment of people that he surrounds himself with. And then we got, there's someone else. I, I recently made a, a partnership with my friend, business partner, his name is Dapo, and he's been running a multiple seven figure operation in the insurance space. So he invited me to be a partner with him in his business that's already generating seven figures and he wants me to be a part of that. So I'm like, that guy is building a big vision. I'm in. And then I can keep doing the, the main thing that I am good at because all I'm doing is referring people to that guy's vision, referring people to this guy's vision, referring people to that guy's vision. And I'm going to stay in my velocity banking, consulting, financial strategist, personal finance, kingdom, space. And I'm going to delegate the, the work out, right? I've come across people like um, at the end asset specifically, it was, there was Chris Kirkpatrick there. Um, the Hutchinson was there. Uh, a lady I really like, Kim Butler, really like her. And there was an older gentleman I really liked came across, I mean, it's just, I can go down the list. This guy named Scott, Garrett Gunderson was there. And I'm just like, these guys got big freaking visions, big dreams, big. And I'm just sitting here, I'm like, I'm just, I'm just helping my people over here. And if all I do is connect with those guys, build bridges, build good relationships long-term, all I do is just stay there, watch them grow, help them any way I can. By default, I win just by not quitting, by default, playing the infinite game by default. So that is a prime example of, of step five. So I'll, I'll take it back to the, to the screen here. Let me show it again, give you an opportunity to answer, right? So that's my business model. Step one, create content, right? Step two, I'm strategizing. I'm, I'm making offers to people on the back end, right? That step one and two, is at least seven to nine streams of income on, on automatic. And then step three is my servant work, ministry of finance, additional giving. When I give beyond measure, I give abundantly, I'm causing hearts to shift, minds to shift. They give more, The when I receive their giving, that is an inspiration to me, that's a confirmation that I'm doing the right stuff. So now I'm gonna give even more and it becomes a healthy, loving battle of giving. It's amazing. And then step four, I'm gonna syndicate over the next 10 years. I'm gonna, so when I mean syndicate, I'm gonna syndicate with the Caleb's of the world, with the Chris Kirkpatrick's of the world's, with um, Garrett's Gunderson's of the world in that space and my buddy Dapo, my buddy Alex, and so many others that I know are listening I'm syndicating with you. It's going to be pretty awesome. And then step five is like my biggest takeaway. It's just finding those people with big visions and big dreams and just collaborate with those big thinkers and achieve greater results. My goodness. So I'm going to look real quick to see who is 
who answered. So step five. Yep. So you like you like step five. Um, yep. The money teacher likes one, two and five. Cool. Lionel. Step one and step five. My buddy Miner says all for me. Philip really likes step one. Great. Vincent, all of them. Step five. George, all of them. Beautiful, beautiful. And you can keep commenting as more which ones that you're really taking away from. Oh, shout out to uh, uh, Sebastian Boyer. I think he's in the house. Just saw him. He said all. Sorry, I missed your comment. And then I, I did see Life 180 in the house. Shout out to, to, to Chris Kirkpatrick. Love it. Shout out to Fantastic, Christy Van. Love watching the young people excel. Love it. And then Chrissy says all of them. Yep. So, so all right. So, Jay, you, you definitely summarized what I was saying. There's entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. I'm definitely more of an intrapreneur. Like, I can work in someone's business. Like, if someone offered me a job that made sense, like, I probably would take it. Like, that might sound crazy to you. Like, if someone offered me a job, a job, a J-O-B, I know it stands for just over broke. I get it. But if someone offered me a job and it made sense, I would probably take it, right? And I, and I know that might feel like a little weird for some folks that are like trying to get out of your job. That's because you're not in your life's work. You're not in your purpose. That may be the reason why you're trying to get out of that job. But what happens is we get convinced into starting our own business, becoming a boss babe, a boss dad, right? And don't realize what that entails, the responsibility, making your own schedule, planning your entire day out. Like I'm not exactly good at that. I'm a good planner and all. But again, when it comes to casting out a vision, a dream for my business and putting things together, like I'm a better servant. Like I have no problem filling someone else's cup with my pitcher. I have no problem doing that. I have no problem walking around with a pitcher and going over to the, the millionaire's table over here. You need some water, sir? Pick up a gem. I have no problem doing that. I have no problem not speaking at an event and just sitting in the front row and watching magic happen in front of my eyes. I have no problem spectating so that I can apply properly in my own life. I have no problem. I don't have to be the face. Like I don't, right? So some of you may be like that, right? Because I, I think the reality is like, there's like 1% of people with that genius, like vision, big, audacious type stuff that will actually stick with it, right? There's a bunch of us who have visions and goals, but do you really stick with it? What if you were put in, a, in an environment where you can stick with it? Like the, the, the success rate is higher, right? And that's all I'm trying to solve for is that success rate. I'm trying to increase my success probability for sure. So recap, I gave you the five principles that I'm operating in in my 10-year wealth plan. Be, do, have mindset. Highest form of wealth is imagination. Principle three, set 10x goals. Wherever, Whatever your annual gross revenue was last year, just times that by 10 get the number and now you're forced to think activities and the do's that will get you to that 10x goal. And even if you fail miserably, you get halfway there. I don't think anyone's going to be upset. I really don't. Like if I fail to get to 3.7 million by 2024 and I get 25% of the way there, like what's, let's see, 3.7 million times 25% is 925K. That's, that's nearly 2X, a little over 2X what I did last year. Who's upset? Not I. Not I, big guy, not I. So that's the third principle. Fourth principle, practice the main thing that you do until you can't get it wrong. Delegate and automate as much as you can around that thing until you cannot get it wrong. So my thing is velocity banking. That's my thing, right? That's my thing that I do. It's personal finance, running people's numbers, like going through the intricate math and running through case studies all day, every day. I'm going to keep doing that. Till I turn blue in the face. Like I'm just not going to stop. Right. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Now people are going to ask me questions like Denzel, I need life insurance. Denzel, I need health insurance. Denzel, I need long-term care. Denzel, I, I'm looking at IUL versus whole life. Boom. Talk to Chris. Referred. Right. I need business credit. Sebastian Boyer. Referred. Um, Denzel, I'm looking at e-commerce stores. Alex Alberan. Referred. Um, Denzel, uh, I need health insurance long-term care. Okay. My buddy Doppo got you. Cool. Done deal. I need vision. I need dental. That's my buddy Doppo. I got you. You're good. Just keep going down the list. Like I don't have to do all the well, taxes, better wealth, referred, done deal. They know it. I'm their client. I'm getting results. I'm just constantly like delegating 
the stuff that that's their main thing so that I know that they're going to get a better service than if I were to do it myself. All right. And I'm going to keep doing what I'm good at. Fifth principle. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? Those are the four questions. Ask that around the dinner table. Remind each other. Wait, then you said you're Denzel, Napoleon Rodriguez. And why are you trying to act like Denzel Washington? Right. It's okay to call people out. Right. Especially if they're in your inner circle. Dude, why are you trying to be like her? Why are you trying to be like him? And you just do you. Right. Be the best that you can. Know why you're here. Right. What's my purpose? Where am I going? Okay. And then there's the business model shared with you the five steps. Great content, strategize, ministry of finance, syndicate, find people with big visions. Now I'm going to share my screen and share with you a little numbers on personal and business financial stewardship model. This is the model I've been living by for the last three to five years. Pretty consistent with everything that I'm saying here. Like I always say in all my videos, you got to know your numeros. You got to know your numbers. You got to know it down to the penny. You have to. I'm pretty sure you know how tall you are. I'm pretty sure we all know how much we weigh right? You could lie to yourself. But I'm pretty sure you know the real number. I'm pretty sure you know how old you is. So why don't you know your numbers, your financial numbers? You gotta know them, right? You can't just walk through life and willy nilly, right? Uh-uh. It's not gonna work. You gotta know your numbers. If you ask me my numbers any point of the day, I will give you straight answers. Next, always spend less than what I make. That's the principle. Can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong when you spend less than what you make. You really can't. It's a principle. Number three, I run as many bills and, and expenses through my personal and business credit cards for an average savings of about 10 to 15% per year. That looks like in my business, that looks like anywhere from 10 to $15,000 in savings every single year in personal and business operations just by redirecting where I spend the money with what tool. Personal and business credit cards can't go wrong. My next principle is I save 40% of my gross annual income. I save 40% of my gross annual income. Okay. And then I'm going to share with you the breakdown. So example, last year I did 372,000 in revenue times that by 40% is $148,800. Okay. 148,000 uh, minus $105,000 went into cash value life insurance amongst four different policies, two on myself, one on my fiance, one on my mom. Okay. So I got, I'm funding four different policies. That total number is roughly $105,000 per year that goes into cash value life insurance. It's a little over six figures. From there, I max out my HSA. 3850 is the current max. That number usually increases by like $50 every single year. So that's where the other 3850 goes. That's what's left from 105 minus 148. And then the rest, which is a little over 10%, is dedicated to giving. I just give. So I'm saving 40% of my gross, which technically of the 40%, 10% went to like giving, right? So I saved the money so that I could give it. That's usually how I like to operate. Now, sharing with you the business operations, right? So if we did the math, 372 minus the 148.8, you should be left with 223,200 bucks. It costs me roughly $120,000 to run my business. That is a way overestimated cost. Sometimes I'm as low as 105K. It's usually no less than 100,000, no higher than 120,000 to run my business. So I'm then left with $103,200. That money then goes to the personal operation, run my personal life. So again, another super overestimated number is $72,000. Overestimated, so roughly 120 to run the business, 72 to run the personal. We're looking at just around 200 k to live my personal and business life. Therefore, if I do, I did 372, you minus business and personal operational expenses, right? You're finally left with 31,200. This number the th has no purpose yet, okay? So usually every year I do have some monies left over that just doesn't have a purpose, right? And that's fine. Like the, that's roughly a little under 10% of my income that doesn't really have a purpose. And then what ends up happening is I, I put that percentage which is less than 10% of my income, I will I will put that money at risk. So put money at risk. What do I mean by that? So I may invest in something that is outside of my control, but I have a theory or a conviction that that will, will be a very good investment in the long term. 
Maybe it was crypto at one point. Maybe it was um, different types of stocks. Maybe it was me investing in a friend, in, in a, someone that is starting up a business. Maybe it was me lending money, right? Giving money out. Like I've given money. I've helped a friend buy out their car and now they're paying me back uh, at an interest rate. I've lent money to family and friends. So that's technically putting money at risk because they could, what, screw me over, right? They could betray me. That's that's part of life that will and may happen. So that remaining dollars is typically what I do with the money. And if none of that happens or I don't really see anything, then that money will will roll over usually in, into the cash value life insurance. I may roll it over in there um, or I will feed it back into the business operations. I might invest in another camera or invest in a better microphone. I might I might use this money to go to a, a mastermind like the and asset mastermind that I just went to. Um, I'm going to funnel hackers live this year next month in Orlando. So that's that's what it means to me to put money at risk. All right. So it's not like I'm trying to lose the money. All right. So now my next money move. Right. So I gave you the breakdown. This is how I operate. Super simple. Nothing crazy. Know your numbers. Spend less than what you make. Save 40 percent of your income. Right. I stick it in cash value life insurance. I stick it in HSA. I stick it in areas that I'm going to get tax free income from. That's what I want. Tax free income. And then I feed the business. I always reinvest, right? I'm, I'm replenishing the business, right? Feeding it more so that I can pump more dollars out, spend less than what I make on my personal operation going, right? Okay. Here's my next money move that I learned about. So shout out to a YouTube channel called self-directed gentleman's name is Donnell and seeing his stuff. Pretty cool guy. We had a conversation. He was educating me on funding a self-directed 401k and in order to have a self-directed 401k, you must have a business, right? So you have to have a business and essentially your self-directed 401k is like a is like a trust, right? So the money that I contribute to my own self-directed 401k, I'm going to get a tax deduction off my income, right? So I get the business, uh, will receive the deduction. Then I convert the money to Roth status for tax-free growth for life and pay the taxes up front rather than later, right? So this is another vehicle where I can produce tax-free income outside of my cash value life insurance policies and outside of my HSA account. I'm not able to have a Roth IRA any longer because my income is too high, but I can still operate in a Roth environment. Like I can still have a Roth status by converting the self-directed 401k funds. This is what he was explaining to me. I don't know everything. I'm still learning. I may have made a mistake in what I just said. If I did, you can correct me in the comments, right? But this is what I'm looking at. This is my next money move. And then I'm gonna take it to the board here, take it back, take it to the whiteboard here real quick. So next money moves are right here. So first and foremost, the, the money that I said was not purposed or putting at risk, I'm gonna be applying that to real estate, right? My goal is to acquire at least anywhere from a two to four unit. I wanna go the FHA route. I looked in Florida, the max on a four unit FHA loan is $1,072,600, I think. So I did make a mistake there. 3.5% down, 37K. I already have the down payment, have everything. It's just a matter of me finding the right deal. So that is the goal of the next six months, hopefully by the new year, I can acquire my first real estate property. That is the goal, money move. Second money move is moving money, excess cash flow into a self-directed 401k to reduce taxes and then convert that money, then pay the taxes. So it's gonna be like a, I'm reducing taxes, but I'm paying taxes. So it's creating a bit of an offset, pay the taxes up front because I know it's gonna be higher later on on compounded money. And then that money will grow tax-free forever. And especially at my young age, 27, I don't, it doesn't make sense for me to put any dollar in any type of account that I'm going to be paying taxes later on. That does not make sense in my brain. I'm looking for tax-free income. That's what makes sense in my brain. Okay. Next is establish a ministry, right? I already have a ministry, but it's virtual, which is the finance geek ministry. My goal is to get a physical location, right? physical location and it's going to be called finance geek ministry it's going to be a financial and health wellness center and here are the revenue streams that this financial and health 
Wellness Center will produce. So it'll have training, workshops, seminars, and events, etc. So I'm literally going to be doing everything that I'm doing right here with you right now, but I'm going to have a live audience while doing it. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be functional mobility classes and basically working out, functional medicine. I'm going to have doctors on site, chiropractors on site. We're going to do the superhuman protocol. If you don't know what that is, you can Google that. And then we're going to be creating content collaboration. I'm going to have multiple rooms. So just imagine like it'll be like a big facility, something like that. And there'll be a main area, main area where I do the speaking to the masses, right? That are in the room. And then there's going to be like smaller rooms. These are all going to be like YouTube, podcasts, TikTok, Instagram. Like they're going to be all four or five separate studios where content creators in the local area can come and create content, rent the rooms out, use the, the stuff. And then I will create content. My partners, I'm going to invite all my partners that I work with to create content here. And then these rooms are going to be sealed off. So soundproof. So whatever's happening on the outside, they won't hear it. Right. So there could be a speaking engagement going on. Right. Where like someone is motivating people. There's claps and whatnot. And these rooms won't hear it. So that's the goal. Soundproof those rooms. So there's no outside noise. That's the goal. And then on the other side of the, the building, maybe preferably, who knows how the actual layout will be. But essentially, this is where the working out will be, right? All the functional mobility, functional medicine, superhuman protocol, the chiropractor or chiropractors, doctors will be on this side. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring a lot of traffic where people are consistently coming and everything is going to be a subscription model for the most part. Pay a subscription, you get access to the rooms to create content, you book time. There'll be like a business lounge. You know, there'll be like a couple of business lounges. There'll be workstations, co-working spaces. Pay a subscription, you get access to the business lounge, coffee, water, you know, the whole works. Content in the different studio rooms. Maybe set your own speaking event, right? Your own workshop. And then people are coming in to work out, improve their health, improve their wellness, that kind of a thing. This model right here, I was running some math on it. This right out the gate, I know that it can produce anywhere from high six figures, high multiple six figures to seven figures with very good profit margins, like very, very good, right? And can lead to doing eight figures. And then the way to go to, I would say the way to go to like multiple eight figures, nine figures would be to have multiple locations. So now this model is already being done to some capacity. This is already being done. There's nothing new under the sun. So it's already being done, right? To some degree, maybe not everything all in one, but to some degree, these things are being practiced. Here are the current success models of the people that I'm paying attention to. So you got Myron Golden, Alex Hermosi, Think Media, and Better Wealth. These four YouTube channels I'm paying attention to because they're incorporating a model that I like. And I'm going to give you proof, right? So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you that exact model that is in existence. And you're going to see bits and piece of, pieces of it from these different YouTube channels. Now, the one that's doing it the most ideal way that I really like that's incorporating the financial part, a spiritual part, a, lo a physical location with a live audience is definitely Myron Golden right here. So as you can see, he's got the whiteboard. He's talking. It looks like he's on a stage, right? Then he's got this background or whatever. Now, if you watch this video and if I speed it up, go right here, look at this. Watch the camera is going to go. Let's see. So it looks like if you could see in the back, he has people on a Zoom call. It looks like people are on a Zoom and they're watching him live. And then there's a live audience watching him it's like a weird it's so cool it's like a it's like three dimensions what's going on there's there's content creation being produced he's live on youtube or maybe he pre-records it live and then throws it on youtube that's another dimension he's physically in a room with live people these are these are real people right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's fifteen people ish. Right. And then God knows how many people are on that Zoom call. God knows how many people are on that Zoom call because he's got 400,000 subscribers. Right. 
So I'm like, this is the model. It exists. It was in my brain. I thought of it. And then I saw people and then I went on, did market research and I saw, oh, he's already doing it. He's already doing it. So then as you can see, he uses the whiteboard. Cool. So that model is exactly what I want for the part of my finance geek ministry physical location for having a room with chairs, having a big backdrop for the Zoom so that I can have my virtual audience because not everyone's going to live in Florida where I live, right? So I'm going to have that virtual audience. Simultaneously, I'm going to be live on YouTube for my virtual audience and I'm going to have a live audience, right? And I think it just adds crazy amount of credibility. Then there's Alex Hermosi. I like what he's doing in terms of how he gives. So he gives a lot of value and he's always like, I got nothing to sell you, that type of thing. I'm like, yeah, I want to get to that point. I want to get there. So I, I like it from that perspective. Um, and he's like jacked up. So he clearly works out a lot, right? He's in the gym industry, helping people build gyms. So I may reach out for to him on coaching on how to build a successful gym model because I have no idea how to do that, like a private gym, but it's not it's not going to be like your commercial gym. It's going to be more of like people are coming initially for medicine, for healing, and then it's almost like physical therapy for the body, functional mobility. I, I just experienced it recently. It's really cool. And then Think Media, what he's doing is he's bringing other voices, right? So he's got other people on his platform. So 2.6 million subscribers. And you'll see whenever you watch this channel, it's not just him, the main guy creating the content. He's got like four or five other people that also create content like this gentleman right here, that gentleman right there. There's a lady that I've seen before on here, not her. Where is she? I've seen her before. She's created content. So it's like, all right. And then he's got a really nice studio, nice setup where people come in, they sit down, blah, blah, blah. Everything's set up, automated. And then I threw Better Wealth on here because of the whole bigger vision casting. Someone like him, you know, I present what I'm doing with this to him. He would be in. Um, obviously, a Think Media, Alex Ramosi, Myron Golden. They're like on my fantasy team, so I'm not necessarily trying to like reach out to them and use them. That they're they're at a much higher level, higher pace. It would just cost a ridiculous amount of money to to work with them. When in reality, I could build with like a better wealth, a Caleb, right? So one thing that I love to do, and I think this is going to be a lot of value for those of you that come across the Grant Cardones of the world and they're selling a high ticket program, you know, 50,000 bucks, $25,000. And that's basically 50, 75% of your income, right? That's like majority of your income. What if you could invest in a similar version of a Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, Ty Lopez, Myron Golden, Alex Ramosi for a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the cost. And then 10, 20 years from now ish, let's say now they're the next Alex Ramosi, right? Like before Alex Ramosi, who was the guy, right? I don't know. So maybe he just created his own category king type of a space. But I would say before Tony Robbins, it was Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was the guy. Then Tony Robbins came on the scene. I think before Tony Robbins, you had Les Brown as well. And then there was John Maxwell. So after Tony Robbins came this guy, Dean Graciosi. And now the two of them are like, now he's the main dude doing all this content. Ty Lopez, he was like one of the goats. Who came after him? I've seen a dude named Steph, Steph, uh, uh, Graham Stephan. Meet Kevin, right? After Grant Cardone came Meet Kevin. Meet Kevin blew up. So you see how there's a cycle in every industry. There's like the goat, the main guy or the main girl. That's like the dominant in their space and they're high caliber. They cost the most amount of money to access them. But then there's a superstar that's under the radar. No one's seen them yet. And if you're efficient, like to me, that's being efficient where I'm going to buy into this person that's a superstar that no one seems to be paying attention to right now. And before they blow up and go super famous where they become unaccessible, I'm going to access them as much as I humanly can. To me, a guy like Caleb, Better Wealth, he's made himself very accessible to me personally. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm all in. 
with, with this guy. He's only got 19,000 subscribers. The type of material he's talking about should be viral. It should be exploding. It, it, there's no doubt in my brain after attending the And Asset Mastermind, he had people in the room making 50, 70, 100 million dollars a year. He got a CEO of a life insurance company called Lafayette to come speak at his event. He had Penn Mutual, Lafayette, One America, and I think another life insurance company as sponsors for his event. I'm observing, when I go to events, I observe in a different way. Like, yes, I'm listening to the speakers, but I'm also like paying attention to like who's in the room and how did this get funded? Where did the money come from? And I was like, oh, money came from there. For sure, for sure. I was like, wow, okay, that's interesting. And like, he's not, doesn't have a million subscribers. Let me give you another prime example, right? Another prime example, totally different industry. This is in the political space, right? This is in the political space. So I have a friend named Steven Gardner. If you know him, put in the chat. Steven Gardner has 1.32 million subscribers. I'm gonna zoom in on that. 1.32 million subscribers. He's got 1,300 videos. This guy's not playing, okay? But check this out. If you scroll and scroll and scroll, and I might be scrolling here for a while, but if you go all the way to the bottom, I met Steven Gardner when he was at 432 subscribers. I remember that number vividly. 432 subscribers. He reached out to me. He reached out to me about doing a collaboration. At the time, I was I was around I want to say maybe 20-ish thousand plus subscribers. So I was, you know, rocking and rolling, and I'm so glad that I said yes. And the reality is I often say yes to collaborations that make sense, and I'm not judging off of like subscribers amount of views you have numbers like that's not how i evaluate the opportunity i usually will get on a call get to know you a little bit more see what you're doing what you're working on that kind of a thing but this guy is now at 1.3 million subscribers and years later we're now in discussion or it's already in he decided to be an affiliate referral partner for my business do you know how much potential new business loot new leads can come just from his community when he says something people move right so if he says go here look at this guy do this do that um they listen so that's what i'm saying like now you try to talk to stephen gardner he's less accessible that's what happens right when you grow, when you grow, when you grow, you continue to become a consultant to your contemporaries. So those contemporaries increase. Those that watched you years back and they didn't take the action to work with you in the beginning, then they want to hit you up years later now that you're Mr. Big Stuff, right? You're Daddy Warbucks and you're less accessible. And I've been telling that to my clients too. I've been warning people who are working with me for free. I'm like, like get invested, figure out who do you want to run with, figure out who do you want to run your race with, figure it out. Don't procrastinate for years and years because it will pass. So I want to say it's like somewhere around here. Boom. Look at that. Isn't this crazy? That was three years ago. Then Zell and Steven Gardner talk infinite banking and velocity banking on a channel that has 1.3 million subscribers it only has 515 views but that was three years ago can you imagine if him and i discussed that on his channel today you know how many views that would get so we're in we're in the works of doing some amazing collaborative work together super excited about that that's another example of essentially investing in people before they explode recap looking at the current success models of these people to establish a physical location for finance geek ministry these are the next money moves i gave you the the principles that i'm operating by and i'm giving myself a a 10-year game plan and then i have a stack of books here recommended books there's a saying i heard that all leaders uh was it not all yeah, yeah this is how it goes not all readers are leaders, not all readers, people who read, everybody reads for the most part, but not every reader is a leader, but every leader is a reader. It's an interesting statement that I, 
I heard. And I gotta tell you, I'm a terrible reader. It's a mission to get me to read, but it is a an area that I'm working on. So reading the word of God, the Bible, super important. Looking at this book right here, Business Secrets from the Bible, boom, by a rabbi, all right? For customer service, better customer service, there's this book called Unreasonable Hospitality. It, it just speaks to me. Unreasonable Hospitality looks like unreasonable customer service. It looks like ridiculous amount of giving value to an individual and just enhancing their life tremendously. So this book, Unreasonable Hospitality by a guy named Will, all right? The Remarkable Power of Giving People More Than They Expect. What a principle. Dan Sullivan, gonna be reading this, Why 10X is Easier Than 2X, and I believe it, because I've been able to 10X my income once so far, and now I'm going to the next 10X, which is gonna be 3.7 million. This is not an easy read, in my opinion. This is a tough book, but I'm reading it. I'm over halfway through it. It's been taking me forever to read it. Blue Ocean Strategy. This is being able to do proper market research in the marketplace today to see where the opportunities are. So instead of you following your quote unquote passion, I think it's smarter, more efficient to figure out what problem is in the marketplace already, that there's a demand, not enough supply, there's a disparity, and you have the skills, gifts, and talents to proceed and do that job and to me, that's the fastest way to generate income to feed my passion. Fastest way. And then this guy right here, Tom Wall, permission to spend. Permission to spend. He blew my mind with the concept of having buffer volatility vehicles. Buffer volatility vehicles. That looks like maybe a whole life insurance policy. Um, and he really used whole life as the as the big example where if you have retirement accounts and you're in the process of withdrawing income, but what happens when you lose 30, 40% of the value of your retirement accounts due to a market crash, market loss? Instead of withdrawing income from there, what if you withdraw income from a different guaranteed compounded tax-free location as a buffer to allow your account to recover from the losses, then go back to withdrawing income. What a great way to extend your retirement income all the way into your 80s and 90s without any issue. So permission to spend, Tom Wall, Blue Ocean Strategy, why 10X is easier than 2X, unreasonable hospitality, business secrets from the Bible. So we got one, two, three, four, five books and the holy grail itself all of that is part of my education to implement into the real world real application combined with the principles i believe it's a cannot fail model you just can't fail i, I don't see it it failing like it's just one of those things 